Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you rendering in Reaper. I have a project in front of us here. Let's take a look at it. There's a bunch of drum tracks right here in green, some electronic drums over here in orange, in blue, we have some bass tracks, in pink, we have some synths, the red tracks are guitars. Then some lead vocals, followed by some background vocals. Now we've gone through this whole track and made a nice mix of it, and now we want to bounce it down or render it. So here's how we do it in Reaper. We'll go to the File menu and choose Render. And that opens up this dialog. And from here, we can do many different things. From simply bouncing down our track, making a stereo mix, to creating stems, and a whole lot more. Let's take a look. We'll start on the top. The first option chooses what we're going to render. In this situation, we'll choose Master Mix, but we'll go through the others in a bit. Right below it, we choose the Render Bounds, which is going to be the length of our render, the start and end points. For bouncing down a stereo file, we're going to choose Entire Project. But again, we'll go through the other options in a bit. Then we choose where we're going to put the file. In what directory? We'll choose Browse. And I'm going to choose a folder in my Documents directory called Rendered Files. So I can see that path right here. Then we can choose a file name. The song is called Rock Song. So I'm going to name it Rock Song Mix Number One. So now just below it, it shows us where it's going to be rendered. Here's our path. Here's the name of the file. Next, we have our options. We could choose the sample rate. It's set to 44.1 now, which is CD. But we could choose anything else. 48, 96, 192. But we'll use 44.1. Then we could choose how many channels. Most times, with a two-track mix, we'll choose stereo. But we could also choose mono or anything else. Then we'll choose how it's going to be rendered. The options are full speed offline, which is going to go as fast as possible depending on your computer speed, but we're not going to hear it because it's going to render offline. The next option is real time, but still offline. So we're not going to hear it, but it's going to bounce in real time. But we could also bounce it in real time and actually hear it. This is a good option to choose if you want to hear the mix back as it's being bounced or as it's being rendered but we're going to choose full speed offline. So it's going to go as fast as possible, but we're not going to hear it as it's rendering. The next option over here, we can choose to use the project sample rate for mixing and effects processing. The project sample rate is over here under project settings. And in this situation, it's set to 44.1. But if we were bouncing to 48, by leaving this on, the mix is still processing at 44.1, and it gets converted afterwards to 48, instead of processing at 48 the whole time. But we're doing 44.1, so it doesn't really matter, because they match. The next option chooses how we resample. If we're doing a sample rate conversion on the fly, we could change the quality of it right here, from good to extreme. The higher quality ones take longer, but they sound better. But it only matters if we're bouncing at a different sample rate or resampling. These next two options here don't really apply for bouncing down a stereo mix. I'll show you what they do a bit later. Then over here, we can choose to add dither or noise shaping. I'm going to leave those off though. And then we can choose the output format. Right now, it's set to wave but we could choose AFF, MP3, or a bunch of other options. Let's stick with Wave. Then we could choose the bit depth. I'm going to choose 16-bit, which is CD quality, but we could choose anything we want. Really high quality ones, or not so high quality. Then down over here, we could choose to silently increment file names to avoid overwriting. 
we would choose this option if we're doing many mixes over and over again. And instead of erasing the previous ones, Reaper's going to automatically name them with a higher number to avoid overriding the first one. We're not going to need that though, so we'll turn it off. And down here, we could choose to add rendered items to new tracks in the project. If we choose this, whatever we render is going to come back into this project on a new track. But we don't really need that, so we'll turn that off. And finally, we could choose to save a copy of the project to its own file. This is really useful when we're printing many mixes, and we don't want to go through the trouble where we might forget to save each time. By clicking this option, every time we render, Reaper saves the project file. So it's very easy to go back to our project file and tweak that mix, because every render has a Reaper file that goes with it. But we don't really need that, so we'll turn it off. So now we're ready to bounce down. And over here, it says render one file. So if we click it, it's going to bounce it down or render it. And we can see the file being created right here, and we can watch the meter as well. So now it's done, we can either close it, show in Finder, which opens up the directory, and here's our file. Let's choose back, back to the render, and here's our finished file. Let's bounce it again, but this time, let's choose to increment file names. Now if we do it, it's going to bounce it again, but create a new file with an extra number at the end, 001, so it increments the file names to avoid overriding. Let's get rid of these, and let's uncheck this option here. So that's how you render a master mix in Reber. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create stems. Mm -hmm.